welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Playground so that you can write unit tests, or actually just testing in general, um, on Playground. Um, I typically do this uh, when I want to just focus on the code or the logic that I'm having issues with or that I'm trying to test so I'm not distracted by anything in my project. Uh, but the thing is, is the setup, we, have, we basically have to set up because Playground and TX tests, they don't play nicely with each other. So go ahead and open up just a really plain blank playground. Um, you should have import foundation here. Um, that's fine. I actually just deleted the, you know, the boiler code that you know, pops out up when you create a new program. So um, the first thing we need to do is we need to import playground support. So let's go ahead and do that. And we also need to import, of course, um, TX or <laughs> XC test uh, so that we can write tests. All right, so um, then we need to basically create the class that you would actually create if you were actually in a project. So let's go ahead and do that setup now, which uh, is a class, and we're going to name our test. So I'm just going to do. Um, I was going to do fizzbuzz uh, test because that is actually the next thing I'm going to show you um, in the next video. So let's go ahead and just do that. And the class is going to be um, test case. And then we need curly brackets. And there we go. Again, if you have any questions about anything, you know, you just hold down that option key until your mouse turns to a plus sign. Hover, hover over anything that you might have a question about and it will automatically turn to a question mark and click it and it will tell you what it is. And so XC test case is a concrete um, subclass of XC test. Um, it's basically an override point for developers creating tests for their projects. And it has multiple test methods and supports setup and teardown which is the next thing we're going to be adding to it. So let's go ahead and add our setup and teardown. So we do override function setup, which already exists here. And I'm going to go ahead and remove that um, placeholder. And then I'm also going to do um, override function teardown. Remove boiler point or boilerplate code. And there we go. Um, the next thing is, I mean, if you've never done tests before, um, these next two methods is just to kind of show you what will occur when you do run some tests. So um, let's just do function. It's basically a function. And then you give your function a name. In this case, it's going to be test should fail. And this is to show you what happens when a test fails. and. Um, the test case class has a lot of um, methods that you can use. You can assert equal, assert true, assert, assert nil, assert false, not nil, throw. There's a lot of different asserts that you can, you can use here. I'm not going to go over all of them. I basically just typically use um, a handful. <laughs> Uh, basically, equal, not equal, true, false. Um, sometimes I use fail if I'm wanting to test something to fail. I don't use it very often though, but I'm just going to do it here just to show you what a failing test might look like. So I, um, let's go ahead and just type in a message here that will appear in the messages once we run our tests. So you must fail to succeed. All right. The next one I'm going to build is test should pass. And go ahead and write this out. So I'm going to do um, assert equal. So this has two expressions. The first expression is what you're testing. And the second expression is what it should be. So in this case, let's just do um, two plus two, and that should equal four. And then I always like to add messages at the end of my tests in case it fails. I know, okay, I know exactly where that test is or um, because typically sometimes when tests fail, you're not really, I'm not really sure where it fills at and I like to have like a message. So um, sh 
should evaluate to four. All right, so we're done with that. Uh, the next thing we need to do is um, we need to call our tests, which I will fill out. So call tests, and I'll do that in a minute. So one thing we need to do is we need to add a custom playground observer. And like I said, this is one of the areas where uh, playground and uh, XC test don't play nicely with each other. So I have to make them play nice. So I have to create an observer for playground. So I'm just gonna name it playground test observer. And this is gonna be a class NS object. And it's gonna be XC test observation. And what is XC test observation? It's objects conforming to X test, sorry, test observation basically registers to be notified of progress of a, of, of a test run or when it runs. Um, so we're gonna do that. Let's go ahead and do our clear brackets. And because this is, um, you know, Swift is kind of a child of object C, I do have to do that at object C declaration in front of my function. Um, it's kind of one of those things you have to do. I'm gonna name this test case. And I want this one here. So basically what it does, it creates a test case. It will give me a failed description with a description, a file path, and a line and number, which is exactly what I need. So let's go ahead and do print statement here. Actually, let me bring this down so that makes sense. So it's still in the method. I'm gonna do a print statement in here. And it's gonna be test failed. at line, and this is where we can actually figure out what line it filled at, because it's important to know where, I mean, especially if you're writing a lot of tests. Um, in most cases, there's way more tests than there's actually code that is testing. So it's nice to know what number it failed at. So we can just go directly to that number. And then we do to cast test case dot name and then um, a description because it's nice to have the description which is going to be the message that i added up here so the description will be this here all right and then um i'll come back to this so like i said to make it play nice i need to add one more thing so go into your sources file and um, click on it or just click add file so it appears underneath sources, and we're gonna name this test runner. So we're gonna keep foundation, and we're gonna input, import, I should, sorry, XC test, of course. And then I'm gonna create a struct. So public struct, a structure basically, and it's gonna be called test runner. Let's do some curly brackets. Um, now with this, I do have to do a public init statement. Like I said, it's, with Playground, you have multiple files that it has to look at. Um, you do have to use this public keyword. I haven't figured out how not to use it in Playground, but whatever, it works. So just make sure you put public init and then public in front of your struct so that it is available, available to um, the Playground up here. All right, I'm gonna create an empty init statement and we do public function so that this function will also be seen. And then it's going to do run test. It's going to accept a parameter of class, any class, which, which I will define later on. All right. Um, now we have to set up the test. So let's go ahead and create a instance of tests. and test class, so we bring in this parameter down here, and it's, I'm going to say that it's gonna be a XC test case type. And then I need to create a suite. It's gonna be tests.default test suite. And again, test suite is basically a test suite containing test cases for all the tests in the class. 
Again, if you have any questions about this, just go into the documentation. And this is just meant to show you how I set up my playground for doing running tests, creating tests, unit testing, things like that. Okay, and that's it. Go ahead and save that. Don't know what the hell that was, okay. All right, so now it's time to call my tests. All right, so I'm gonna call test runner, create instance of test runner. Going to have it call in its run test. So see, it's now that run test method is available to us. And the test class is going to be our class up here. So we're just gonna copy this piece down here and then we're going to do dot self so it knows that it's within itself and it has to look for fizzbuzz test class that's what that dot self self means so if you ever see oh why is it why doesn't it work I think it should come up with a error message yeah you see it says expected member name call after type use self to reference type object so it's just saying, I don't know, are you talking about this one inside of here, inside of myself? It's like, yes, yourself. <laughs> so that's what that dot self is. That's really convoluted, but that's how I remember it. All right, so let's go ahead and try running our test for the first time. Okay, so we got running tests. Um, test suite started at this time and the first one failed, which I knew was going to happen anyway because I use uh, XCT fail. Um, and again, here's my little message. You must fail to succeed. And then the second test started and it passed. And so down here it's telling us, okay, this is was the result. We executed two tests with one failure in X amount of seconds. <laughs> All right. so. Um, this is just a very basic setup. If you were going to actually create, um, you know, tests for a class that you're building, this is just a boiler point. If you want to join me for the next video, I'll show you how to actually create a class and develop tests for it. All right. If this video has helped you at all, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep <laughs> being notified or want to be notified of when I upload new videos, you have to subscribe. That's the only way. And if you want to follow me on this journey, the best way to do it and to get, you know, everything that I cover um, in a really nice, neat PDF, go ahead and subscribe to my, my email list, my email mailing list. <laughs> You'll find a link down below. All right. Till next time. Keep on coding.